Welcome to the Small Business Marketing Show. Here we will share actionable, effective, and low-cost tips on referral marketing, organized networking, and digital marketing to help grow your business. Hosted by business owners and entrepreneurs who use these techniques every day. Hello, everybody, and welcome to our first episode. My name is Bo Kaufman. I'm a real estate agent with Remax, and I'm a member of a business networking group called the BNI Accelerators. Along with my co-hosts, we're going to be discussing a number of issues, a number of subjects such as uh, digital marketing, social media marketing, and referral networking. My co-hosts are all entrepreneurs and self-starters in their own right, and they're using these uh, techniques to grow their businesses. So let me introduce them, or better yet, let me, in, let me allow them to introduce themselves. Uh, up first here, let's go with uh, Dave Kirkland. Hey everyone, Dave Kirkland with Essential Business Solutions. I uh, hope I'll provide some roundabout advice for everyone and uh, have some fun along the way. All right, uh, up next, Darcy Barrington of AirServe. Great, um, I'm Darcy Barrington, owner of AirServe Heating and Air Conditioning. Uh, we help people with uh, the comfort in their homes and offices, uh, heating, air conditioning, and air quality. Uh, happy to be here. Okay, and Tom, Cascade Financial. Yeah, thanks, Bo. Uh, Tom Johnson. I'm a personal financial planner with Cascade Financial Group uh, based out of Winnipeg. I've been doing network marketing for the last five and a half years as part of a member of the BNI Accelerators. Okay, and Brian Ross of Innovation Fabrication. Hi, everybody. Brian Ross here from Innovation Fabrication and Box Pools. We carry, uh, create projects out of steel, including swimming pools, hot tubs, and houses. Um, great to be here. Look forward to the discussion. All right. So let's get right into it. And the first thing we want to talk about is digital marketing or internet marketing. And one of our members, Tom, has recently delved into that by starting his own website it's a, or a blog. So Tom, do you want to tell us how that went and why you chose it and how you went about doing it? Sure. Um, I, I guess I'll start with the why. Um, I, I enjoy writing. I like the creative process of it. So from a purely selfish standpoint, it's something that I enjoy doing and I can see myself continuing to do. So I definitely wouldn't advocate that anybody who doesn't like writing uh, try to take that on because I think you'll run out of steam really quickly. Um, lots of reasons for doing it. Obviously, somebody might trip across it on the internet, uh, read some of my thoughts, get a good sense of who I am and choose to call me up and become a client. Uh, but what I think is far, far more likely in this day and age is it makes me more credible and more referable, uh, especially in the context of network marketing. I think a lot of today's conversations and referrals uh, are done online by sharing. So if you talk to your neighbor, Bo, and your neighbor happens to mention he has a problem that you know I can help with. Uh, he's you know not confident in his retirement. He's worried about paying too much in taxes or how to leave more money to his kids. He tells you that you can either have one or two conversations it's either, hey, here's a financial planner. I bet you he can help you. How about you give him a call or I have him call you? Or you might go, you know what? I just read a really great article about that. Uh, it was written by a person I know. He's really good at what he does. Can I share it with you? And I think that's a nice, warm introduction. It's a really easy way to introduce somebody to me and the idea of uh, my business and what I can help them with. And I think that just makes it much, much easier for my existing, you know, network centers of influence, friends, family, and existing clients uh, to refer me to folks. As far as the process went, um, I started by, you know, simultaneously writing a bunch of contact, and writing a bunch of content. And I also hired a third party to design and build my site. That's not my expertise. That's not where I wanted to spend my time and resources. So I had a professional build the site for me and set me up so that I can on an ongoing basis keep uploading new content and sharing it and that just made it really seamless and now i've got a nice runway of existing blog posts uh that i can keep putting out you know when i didn't have to write new stuff over christmas um now what what tom mentioned a couple of times there is new and fresh content which is important and that's what separates and that's what distinguishes a blog from a regular website a regular website could be just like a a, a business card on the internet which is okay if people are looking for you specifically by name and they would just want to find out your contact information. But in case of Tom, if somebody's looking, searching for retirement advice or how, you know, how can I retire or, or anything like that, his stuff, his articles have a better chance of showing up. I think it's great the ability to add content uh, on the internet. Um, I know in the past that I've created some solutions with people on uh, internet and it's, some of it's still there and it's great how long it actually stays there. So 
um, the idea of having that bog uh, really helps build that credibility like Tom's uh, trying to achieve, especially in the finance world. I, I think it's good too, where it's an opportunity for uh, customers maybe to initiate some of those things for your blog. Mm-hmm. You'll get a, um, a solid question that, you know, other people are wondering too, and now you can put some content together, just focused on that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, and right. For for my for myself as well, um, my whole business is based off my content. So to for us to have a blog, um, anybody because all of our designs and projects are so unique and custom built, people have a lot of questions that I think that a blog would help answer some of those questions. You know, just to give them a better understanding of these pools and tiny houses and what we do. So I would definitely see the benefit in something like that. That's actually one of the tricks too, is if you're a, whatever business you are, if you go on Google and you t- start typing in what could potentially be a question that your customers are asking you, you'll see Google make suggestions of some of the most common questions asked mm-hmm. about your service. And then you can use that as part of your title for your, um, for your blog post or your article that you want to write. And then uh, by sharing it as often as possible, by having people comment on it, Etc. That article can become so popular that it ranks higher and higher in Google, which is uh, which helps you get get more business. That's a great comment, Bo. And one part of the process that I didn't mention is before I even started uh, the same the same company that did my blog site um, for a few hundred dollars, they did a Google Analytics search for me, right. um, and mm-hmm. they were able to give me the highest search for terms in my field in the province. So as I'm designing my website and I'm thinking about the content I want to create. I can tailor it more towards what people are actually looking for. So again, it makes it more likely that somebody in my, my in my space is going to find my particular blog site because I already know what the average person is searching for. Okay, so question I have is you decided to go with, and like you said, you know, it's not your expertise. It's uh, nobody really is an expert or, or very well versed on that. Uh, versed on that. Um, can you share with us what kind of cost? What are you looking at for hiring somebody to design and host and and Monthly cost, upfront cost? Uh, in my particular case, it was about $400 to get the, the uh, to get the analytics search done ahead of time. Um, I believe all in, it was about $1,200 to $1,500 to have the blog site built. And that includes the first year of hosting as well. And then ongoing hosting is about 20 bucks a month. Um, it's nothing That's good. egregious. It's not a huge chunk of advertising dollars for something that is uh, an evergreen piece to my, you know, personal business market. Look, look at you learning the lingo, evergreen. Good for you. <laughs> and now what business, uh, you, you also picked a business name for your blog. What did you pick? Yeah, if anyone's interested, it's retirementplanningguide.ca. Um, really surprised that domain name wasn't taken already, but right. there you go. I found a lot, a lot of Manitobans were specifically searching for questions around retirement when to retire, how to retire, what to do with my pension. And so those were the kind of questions that I was able to tailor my domain name and my content towards to help find the people who are, who are actively searching for my help. Retirementplanningguide.ca. When, when you're looking at building a, a website, you always want to focus on the client persona. So who are you selling to? Who you, mm-hmm. Who's your target audience? So in the specific of Brian there, when he was talking about, well, hey, maybe I should do a blog site. Well, I'm definitely going to talk a little later maybe about it with him about setting up a blog site for simply one of your journeys of your, of your uh, trailers. Like, I mean, your containers. You know, you've got this big project where you're shipping something. Where do you say somewhere you're shipping? It's going to be a ridiculous amount just because of this. They want a double side. They want a double wide. Right. That's a great story to tell somebody. Right. Right. And you could document the whole journey in a blog. Right. Yeah. And, and with video and photos. And your website's already set up for it. Right. Exactly. Right. All right. So then next thing we're going to talk about uh, a subject that's dear to all our hearts, and that is referral networking. This is where Darcy comes in. An organized way to get people to refer you. Darcy, tell us about your experience. Uh, Absolutely. Um, I think the best way that I can kind of say something about word of mouth or referral marketing is uh, to kind of give an illustration. So it begins with uh, the very famous question, who do you know? Right. And uh, and that's one that that we talk about quite often. So someone that could uh, help someone with uh, a problem or a situation or, or even just a question 
And as uh, professionals or trades or other businesses, we're often chosen by customers or clients to help them out with uh, something that's, that's all very important to them already. Um, the same people though, they, they have more than one need, right? Um, so if it's their home or their business, um, they have a lot of items that need to be addressed. And so many of these are outside of the scope of what we do. Um, so when they ask, who do you know that can assist me on this? You can make a recommendation of a person and say, why as well? Um, so we know the person we're recommending and, and there's a real assurance uh, to our customers that they will be looked after. So if we extend that out to them and say, yeah, I know this person, help me with, with my situation, we'll help you with yours. And I've seen it done lots of times. Um, that's really what the essence of uh, word, word of mouth or referral marketing is. Sir, madam, you have a need. Uh, I believe I know the right person to provide a solution. And that is just solid, right? Um, we can confidently put out an associate of ours, uh, put their name forward to the customer and absolutely know that they're going to be looked after. Um, the good part, though, is that a referral like this uh, it solidifies our relationship with our customer um, because they, they see us as someone that just wants their best interest. So it's not just a win-win, it's a win-win-win because you're helping another business, you're helping your customer and you're helping your relationship too. So that's the big deal to me. Uh, I could talk about this stuff all day, right? Right, so, yeah, no, we all can. I think, right. I think a lot of value as a business owner or um, anybody who's in a business growing role, uh, a lot of value to their practice by being that person who's the center of a referral uh, relationship, like being the connector is a huge value add. So even if it's not something directly tangent to your business, um, if I have a client who asks me about help with their roof, I know a great roofer. If I have a client who's looking to install a pool, I know somebody who builds pools. Um, you can connect people with all these different fields. And by being that person who can be the connector, I think it elevates your relationship with your existing clients. And again, helps make you more referable and a much stronger business relationship all around. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> it's, it, it just, it expands. Um, it, it's funny where life takes you and from where people were 20 years ago and the contacts they made 20 years ago and that they keep making today now this is uh, essentially just puts a 20 multiplier on who mm. you know. So now yeah. anybody that calls me about anything, uh, probably, you know, before getting into network marketing, um, anybody would call me. Yeah, I, I could maybe look up and think of somebody now, nowadays, come at me. What do you need? You need to, mm. you, you, want to you want your kids to be able to have sailboats when they turn 18 years old? Let me talk to my friend Tom here. And yeah, no, no issues uh, recommending anybody in our group. And because everybody is professionals, everybody truly understands the power of doing this correctly and openly and honestly. So that's what I find to be kind of the, the, the best feature of the network marketing. And what, what Darcy kind of touched on, the easiest way is what we call power teams. So that you have a number, you have one client who can be served by half a dozen different services that are all connected. So for example, if you have, uh, in, in my case, somebody wants to buy a house, well, they're going to need a lawyer. They're going to need home insurance. They might need mortgage or life insurance. Uh, they'll need a mover. They'll need a home inspector. And I've got to end by fingertips and close relations with all those kind of people so that it makes it easy for me to refer. And my client looks at me as going, well, you do more than just sell houses. You actually make the whole process easier. Um, and you can recommend people that are stand-up people that do a good job. That's, it makes me look good. Like Darcy says, it's a win-win-win. Well, I think uh, just one thing I'd add too is like, it, it's automatic that we're going to get to know more and more people that own businesses. And it, if we don't leverage that, it's just like right, buying tools and leave them sit. Yeah, right? it's, it's, it's wasted effort and time. Yeah, that's right. Um, there's also, if, if you don't recommend somebody and the, the client finds that person on their own, who's to say that that person, first of all, does a good job, or second of all, might not pull 
them away from you in the future, mm, you know, right. and, and work against you. So it's good to have that tight circle where we all kind of keep that client happy and keep recommending him. Well, and it, and it as well too, it just uh, lends credibility that instead of just going through the phone book or just going online and finding somebody, if I get a, for example, from you, Bo, if you vouch for a lawyer and say, this is a great lawyer to work with, you yourself have a good, you know, reputation, stand up guy. So your opinion holds a lot more water versus myself just going on Google and finding somebody. If you would vouch for them, that's good enough for me. Right. So that's where it can really help because we're all the consumers of our own products as well too, be it electrical, be it heating and cooling. We at some point are all going to be clients as well too of each other. Yeah. Okay. And I, I think something that we've all touched on here that's incredibly important when developing a, a network marketing plan is you need to trust your network. You need to know that the person that you are referring mm -hmm. one of your contacts to is going to do a great job. And that's something that the BNI Accelerators does really well is by meeting weekly, we hold each other accountable, we get to know people well, and we weed out the folks who aren't going to do a good job, uh, which just means that you can inherently trust that that referral you're giving is going to receive excellent service. And you don't have to worry that the person that you struck up a deal with is not going to call your client back or is not going to give their best performance when it comes to doing their job. Right, because here's the key. Uh, the referral you make reflects on you. And if mm -hmm. you refer somebody who falls down, who drops the ball, it makes you look bad. So you yep. got to be careful in who you refer. Okay, well, um, as, we, as you've heard us talk about, we're all entrepreneurs. We all know each other. Um, there's another thing we all have in common. We all are members of the same chapter of BNI. Now, what's BNI? BNI stands for Business Network International. Um, it was an organization started in the mid 80s by Dr. Ivan Meisner. And its main focus is to help people uh, gain new business by referrals, by members referring each other. And I looked this up. The latest stat are that in the last 35 years, BNI has now grown to over 9,500 chapters worldwide with over 270,000 members. Um, so chances are there is going to be one or more chapters in your city. In fact, I did look this up. So I can say that is whether you're in Albuquerque, New Mexico or Zagreb, Croatia, see what I did there, A to Z, doesn't matter, they all have chapters. In Winnipeg, we, in fact, we have seven chapters. Now, one of the cornerstone uh, ideas or one of the cornerstone things with BNI is that they only allow one member per profession. So for example, Darcy had to uh, take off right now. He's the HVAC uh, person in our group. Uh, Brian Ross is the uh, uh, steel fabricator in our group. I'm the realtor. Dave is the uh, business financing and leasing expert, et cetera, et cetera. So if you look for a chapter in your city and they already have, let's say you're a painter and they already have a painter, you can't join, but you can find another chapter who might be looking for you. Okay, so I'm going to uh, open it up, uh, talk about, uh, let everybody talk about the experiences that they've had. Uh, Dave, how long have you been a member in our group? I'm probably the the newest member of the group right now. I just started uh, just this past uh, summer uh, replacing uh, uh, Travis Couture from uh, the, our company here at Essential Business Solutions. Uh, but I did have some prior BNI experience, right. so I didn't come in, uh, you know, super wet behind the ears, but uh, wet behind the ears <clears throat> when it came to uh, the uh, Winnipeg chapter. Well, what's what's unique there is that you have the um, the perspective from another city. You came from Ottawa, right? Yeah, that's right. I was out in the East Coast for several years. I am born and raised here in Winnipeg, but uh, spent some time in uh, some other careers and uh, definitely uh, enjoyed uh, enjoyed the time. And, and I found BNI very beneficial. And, and the chapter growth obviously is beneficial to everybody because the more centers of influences you have around, uh, the more that your business business can grow just from within the, the chapter, which is pretty remarkable. Well, what I find interesting is that uh, I, I'm sure you'll bear this out. We had a person come to our group from Vietnam who was a member of a BNI chapter in, I don't know if it was Ho Chi Minh City or something like that, but it was, it was in Vietnam. And he came and he sat through one of our meetings and he said, wow, this is exactly like we do it at home. So yeah. I'm sure you can bear that out that Ottawa's with, with minute differences yeah, absolutely. Right, the meetings are the same. 
the things that you'll find with chapter uh, differences is a lot of the time when there are in person is the actual layout of the tables. You know, you'll see your for uh, you know discussion tables like we do in our chapter, or you'll see a C, uh, you know, C shaped where you have your your speakers in the front and powerpoints, and 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 I think that's the fun thing about it, right? Is you have a, a certain format that everybody follows with, you know, the the you know two minute infomercials and and things like that but they also put their own twist on it. And I think with our chapter, we really have that. And that's why you can see that we're the, one of the largest ones in our city. Okay. Tom, I think you said you've been around five years in our group. Yeah, about five and a half years now, I've been a member of the Accelerators. Um, I actually had heard about BNI from a colleague prior to join, and she had such stark raving things to say about it that I thought it'd be foolish to not apply. And uh, it's, it's really held its own. I mean, I've struggled for years to find a, reliable realtor who I could have in my contact sphere, uh, a good mortgage broker, uh, an accountant, a lawyer, all those things that you associate with personal finance and to have somebody who that I could count on consistently just didn't exist outside of a uh, structured format. So finding BNI was absolutely huge for me. Uh, I've been tracking my stats religiously and BNI over the past five years has consistently accounted for between 15 and 20% of my revenue year over year over year. And so it's, you know, a key cornerstone to my business plan for 2021 and beyond. And I encourage anybody out there who's been looking to develop those centers of influence that they can trust and depend on and rely on and looking to grow their business to, uh, to come check out our, our group or a similar networking group, because it's, uh, it's an instrumental piece to my business. Here's the key. And you said at 15 to 20 percent. Uh, no single income stream should account for 100% of your business. I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's magazine advertising or radio advertising. You should be getting your income stream, your clients, your customers from a variety of sources. So that if one of those sources, there's something happens, uh, there's a mail strike and you've been relying on sending postcards to people or anything happens, you've got other streams to rely on. And 15 to 20% is a pretty healthy return for, for the investment in BNI, so good for you. Brian, how long have you been? You've been, uh, you've been here two years, right? Or you're in your second year? Okay. Yeah, um, I, I find uh, I, I do like the weekly meetings. I do like the, uh, not only is a chance to sort of get together with uh, like-minded individuals, um, which is first and foremost why, I, what the benefit I get the most is you have people that um, you don't even realize are friends until you actually sit down every single week. You get to know these people, you get to know the integrity of these people. And as you get to know that, um, it really does uh, expand your thoughts on if you have an issue within your business, I bet you there's 20 other people in that room that have had that same issue. So something that you're sweating, and this is all new to you, there's lots of people in the room that can relate. So it's not just somebody, yeah, I understand. Yeah, that's too bad. These people can actually give you good advice and say, hey, when I first started out, this is how I did this. And just for that inner circle of people that, uh, uh, you know, uh, brother and womanhood uh, getting together and just chatting about that, it, it, it makes you feel very comfortable. And uh, I'm all about relationships. To me, it's not about the money. It's about the relationships. If you have good relationships with people, an answer might be no today, but in 10 years from now, it's yes. And if you have that relationship, people will remember that. And I find that in our group, we don't have any high pressure salespeople. Mm -hmm. We don't have any uh, slick salespeople that just want to tell you all the right things. These are genuine people that are trying to grow their own business and do it ethically and honestly. And that's what I truly get the most benefit out of. Definitely. That's one of the hidden benefits of BNI is you're rubbing elbows with an accountant, with uh, an investor, with, you know, so all these people, you, can, you, you know, little questions come up during the week, you can pick their brain at the meetings, uh, get some free advice. Um, show of hands, who here is hoping to be go back to in person meetings soon? Oh, yeah, uh, right? for the food. <laughs> yeah. right, exactly. So to anybody who's watching and listening, uh, 
for, for decades, these meetings have always been in person. Of course, now with COVID, we are in Zoom meetings, but I'm gonna show you a video right now of what our meetings look like. We had some, a videographer come and, and do a 60 second thing. Um, we are all hoping to get back to in-person meetings because they're fun, they're dynamic, they're entertaining, educational, and they're very effective in helping each other. So I'll play that right now. And then we've got um, um, a guest, one of our other members, we're gonna call him a featured member, waiting in the waiting room. We're gonna let him in and talk to him right after this. All right, and we're back. I hope you enjoyed that video. Like I said, the meetings are super fun. Um, who knows when we get back to them, but we're all hoping that's gonna be soon. So in the meantime, we've had one of our other members, by the way, our chapter currently has 25 members, 25 assorted businesses. As I said before, it's one member per profession. And we recently had uh, the induction of a property management company, and that's who's joined us right now. Um, his name is Eric Vielfor, and he, he, he and his partner run JX Property Management. Say hello to Eric. Hey, everyone. Nice to be here. Okay, Eric, tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do, um, and how you came to us. Sure, you got it. Yeah. Um, so my name is Eric Vielfor. As you said, I'm a partner with uh, Prince Soriano. He's my partner. We both own JX Property Management, and we're a... Uh, I guess you could say smaller business located in Winnipeg. We focus on managing small uh, residential properties. So single family homes, duplexes, triplexes, fourplexes, those kinds of buildings. Um, and we, we have a, a strong focus on delivering um, what we consider high quality living spaces for our tenants. So we're always looking at uh, offering quality spaces, places that are well maintained. And um, yeah, we had one of the members from uh, the uh, BNI Accelerators reach out to us in the summer uh, and uh, asked us to join as guests. And we did so and we really liked what we, uh, we saw and we decided to join, um, I believe, uh, not too long ago here in the summer. So. Okay, Brian. So what was the most uh, attractive reason uh, for you wanting to join a network referral group? Then? I mean, I guess at first, uh, you know, when we got the invitation, we were thinking, great, this is a, an awesome way to grow our business. You know, we've got people, um, BNI, um, I, actually, I wasn't too familiar with what BNI was, but when I did a bit of research, I, I learned that, you know, you got people basically working on your sales team for you. They're, they're uh, spreading your name and that's a great way to grow your business. So that was the initial attraction. But then when we got to participate in the meetings, we saw the uh, the energy, we saw um, different people that were part of that group. And that was something that was really attractive to us. So um, definitely the you know, the lead generation was one aspect, but also the uh, the overall, uh, I guess, environment of the BNI meetings. So having like a, a boutique, uh, a biz property management uh, business like yourselves, um, what kind of, you know, you know, research did you do behind that you know, you, you said you, you checked out some of the other groups and such, but what, uh, you know, what kind of led you with that to decide? Because obviously you guys are a little bit analytical, I imagine, with uh, some of the property management stuff you do all, as well, right? Yeah, totally. Um, like I said, I didn't know much about BNI before I was introduced to, uh, to this chapter by, uh, by one of the members. So I definitely did quite a bit of research there just to learn a bit more about what it was. We, we found out it was a, uh, like a global organization. So obviously they're doing something right. Um, and uh, learned a bit more about the, the reputation of this chapter in particular, the accelerators chapter. And 
uh, how it had a, a strong following and you know, a good number of members and uh, lots of active members that have been around for a long time. So that was also something that we thought, you know, it's all good signs. Eric, have you looked into any other networking groups before uh, joining the accelerators? And what was it about the accelerators that made you choose us over anywhere else that you may have uh, looked at before? Yeah, you know what, the, the networking group was something that was a bit newer to us. We were, uh, you know, we have a, as a business, we uh, haven't been around for too, too long. So we were really focused on setting things up. Uh, so we didn't do a crazy amount of research into networking groups, but I had looked into actually Toastmasters. And uh, the reason I'd looked into Toastmasters was just kind of that idea of developing a network, uh, getting the opportunity to speak with different people. Of course, you get the chance to, to go up front and kind of practice your public speaking skills. So that was something that I had kind of explored. Um, and then, you know, we came across BNI just kind of by coincidence. Like I said, I met... Uh, one of the members was actually he's a contractor and, and we hired him for uh, maintenance on one of our houses and uh, he mentioned BNI and then when we discovered you know hey uh, BNI allows us the opportunity to speak in front of people just like Toastmasters but then with the uh, added benefit of you know that that lead generation which is a huge huge benefit. So. Okay so I've got one question for you uh, maybe getting back to your business how many uh, your residential property managers so you're helping people who own investment properties rental properties uh, how many houses do you currently have under contract Yeah we have about 110 doors so that's not necessarily properties that's the units that we manage Right so a, a duplex would be two doors Correct Any advice Eric that you'd give to somebody else who's looking to join a networking group uh, that you think would be the any actions they could take that would be the highest return on investment for getting into uh, network marketing? I guess the the most important thing is to surround yourself with with quality professionals, uh, people that you can trust, people that you can network and, and really get value out of it. Um, you know, finding those tasks that are or maybe strategies that are lower cost uh, but generate the most amount of return would is obviously ideal. Um, so, you know, I think a great place to start is, is BNI for sure. Right. And research has shown that referral marketing, referral networking like this is the, the cheapest and it's the best offers the best return on investment uh, for your dollar. Yeah. I, I believe a lot it. Of, sorry, go ahead, Eric. No, I was just going to say, I believe it to, uh, to agree with Bo there. Um, Eric, what uh, have you seen the benefits to network marketing since joining? Like, have you become a believer now spending the time with the people and you would reference Toastmasters? Do you find that, uh, you know, what, what are the true benefits you've seen about joining our group? Right. Well, I mean, obviously, there's uh, the, the fact that you've got a essentially, like I said, a sales team, people that are you're spreading your name and, and um, uh, you know, working to to get you more leads. That's the, the obvious one. Um, but one thing that I hadn't quite realized before joining you know, when I was looking into it um, was the, the, the relationships that you de develop there in the, in the group and the, you know, the camaraderie. And um, you know, when I, I attended my first meeting in person, uh, just the energy and, and how fun that meeting was, was really, uh, was really cool. So not something that I was expecting um, but definitely is a, a great benefit there. It, it uh, you know, we meet on Wednesdays, so it kind of brightens up your day on Wednesdays when you meet with that group, have some fun uh, over lunch. Um, I mean, another one for us in particular as a property management business, we're always looking for quality professionals to work with. We need, you know, good electricians. We need good uh, HVAC professionals, all this stuff. And um, now that we've joined BNI, we've got access to those professionals and um, you know, they've, been, they've been awesome to work with. So that's been a great benefit to us as well. I think you made a really great point there, Eric. You're not the first person. I've, I've had dozens of members, current and former, mention that just the energy from being at that weekly meeting um, helps, helps them. They look, they look forward to it each and every week. It's a good midweek boost to get them through to the end of the week. And uh, if nothing less than just a positive energizer, there's a, quite a few intangible benefits to having that, you know, regularly scheduled networking meeting with uh, a grown group of friends and colleagues. And so I think, you know what, there's, there's no cost to doing it. I encourage anyone just to come out to see a meeting, to right. see what we're all about. Any negative stigmatisms, any, uh, and anything that you would any think. Doubts. That would, That's right. Any doubts. 
you would see in one meeting how relaxed everybody is, how genuine everybody is, even though it's uh, very structured, it's still very entertaining every week to hear what everybody's up to and how we can help each other. So it costs nothing to bring a visitor, just come in and see what it's all about. See if it's something that would be great for you. And if this can help your business in any way, it's a fantastic organization. And that's the perfect way to wrap this up. Um, as, as Brian says, there is no cost because right now we're on Zoom meetings. There's no lunch involved. We're not renting a hall. So there is no cost right now. And a very simple way to ask for, um, uh, if you don't know a member of the BNI Accelerators, very simple way to ask for an invitation is go to our website, which is businessnetworkingwinnipeg.com. And there's a button at the top that says request invitation. So again, again, that's Winni um, businessnetworkingwinnipeg.com and just press the button to request an invitation, fill that out. It's gonna ask you your name, it's gonna ask you your email and what you do for a living. Uh, it'll come to us and we'll send you an invitation. They are Zoom meetings and they happen every Wednesday from noon till 1.30. It's an hour and a half long meeting. Um, you get to promote yourself. You get a chance to talk, tell us about who you are, what you do, what kind of businesses, uh, business uh, uh, you're looking for. Um, maybe that's what we're going to use to to wrap this up, guys. I know we have 25 members. Who else do we need in our chapter? Let's start with Eric. Who else would you like to see in our chapter that would help your business? A cleaner would be really useful to us. Right, residential cleaner uh, and commercial, whatever cleaning yep. company. Okay. Uh, awesome. And that's, and that's good. You're looking for somebody that you can give business to. <laughs> that's uh, <right. laughs> no, that's, that's, that's fantastic. That's the giver's gain philosophy, right? If you give them business, they'll either return it to you or they'll return business to somebody else in the group. And that keeps the whole circle going. Yeah. Tom, what do you, what do you want? Yeah. My, my number one request would be for a, uh, a wedding and event planner. I think our group puts together lots of events. We have lots of businesses who do um, promotional activities and quite frankly, I deal with lots of clients who are newlyweds. So uh, between the three, I think there's lots of opportunity for uh, that stage in life or that stage in business event for cross promotion and uh, our chapter can support them. And I think they could support us. Okay, uh, Dave. I would definitely uh, say a, a sales trainer or a, um, a, a coach, a, a business coach. I think that'd be a lot of value to a lot of us because a lot of us are trying to solve a problem and someone like that would help us guide through the process to be able to do that effectively. Okay. And uh, Brian, what do you need? Either to, give you, either to give you business or to, uh, to give business back to them. To, uh, for me to give business back to them, I would be uh, first and foremost for me would be a plumber for me personally. We build pools, we build tiny houses, always need a plumber. So a plumber would be a huge benefit to me. As far as a chapter, we need a florist. We could keep a florist busy. Yeah, no all. kidding. <laughs> and uh, so if there's any florists that are uh, tuning into this, this is definitely a group you want to get into. Right. Uh, for, for me, as a real estate agent, we have an electrician. We have a roofer, a painter, an HVAC company. Uh, I, I echo a plumber, mm -hmm. a flooring company, uh, a moving company would be huge for me. Uh, somebody I can recommend, somebody I can trust, moving companies. There's a dozen, of, there's dozens of them out there. They're a highly unregulated industry and they're not all very good. I, I want a good, reliable moving company to join our group. Okay, so that, uh, that was our first effort today. Um, if, you, if you've enjoyed this, yeah, thank you very much, guys. Yeah. If you've enjoyed this, if you've watched this, uh, send us some feedback. Uh, again, go to businessnetworkingwinnipeg.com and uh, leave us a message, um, send us an send us a, a invitation request. We'd love to, uh, love to hear from you. And uh, we plan to do this again. I don't know how often, how, you know, when we can get everybody organized and get everybody together, maybe once a month or so, we'll come up with different topics to discuss and, uh, and share our information. From uh, the BNI Accelerators, and on behalf of everybody here, uh, it's been Bo Kaufman, Remax Performance. Thank you very much for tuning in. We hope you've enjoyed this discussion. In Winnipeg, check out the BNI Accelerators for more information. Contact Bo Kaufman of Remax at 204-333-2202 or go to businessnetworkingwinnipeg.com.